So, uh, just to present Nada, after a PhD in physics in 2006 from the Paris State University, Nada Coes worked in the field of uh, science communication outreach for seven years within major science museums in Bordeaux and in Paris, including Musée des Arts et Métiers and Cité des Sciences. Since uh, 2013, she has been working at the Laboratoire des Sciences du Climat et de l'Environnement, an internationally renowned laboratory in the field of climate and environmental sciences, part of the Institut Pierre-Simon Laplace and the key player in the IPCC. She is in charge of the overall laboratory communication with a focus on some large projects, such as Panoply, the geoscience instrumental platform for mineralogical elemental isotopic analysis and radioactivity measurements. ICOS, the Greenhouse Gases Observation Infrastructure, and the Climate Services aimed at providing the stakeholders with climate information for decision-making based on future simulations. She works closely with researchers from different teams to create communication products tailored for different audiences, industrial partners, journalists, general public, etc., which gives her a broad vision of the laboratory research topics. And I pass the screen and the word to Nada. Many thanks, uh, Lucia, for inviting me. Uh, so I will share my screen. Please tell me if you see the first slide. Yes. Okay. So, uh, is climate changing and is this an issue? As I'm talking to geologists, I, will, I have to give uh, long-term answers. So, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, for instance, during the Neoproterozoic era, uh, the Earth experienced two snowball Earth episodes. Uh, if we look at uh, the Phanerozoic uh, era, uh, we had uh, very high uh, CO2 levels, temperatures and sea levels compared to the current climate. So yes, climate has always changed and life survived to very extreme situations. But as the topic of tonight's, uh, this evening's uh, event is uh, uh, the energy transition, I would like to focus on the more recent period and the questions should be, is the climate we are used to changing? And to what extent are our current societies able to handle such a rapid climate change? So I wanted to show this uh, graphic representation of the temperature called the climate stripes. Uh, each color represents the mean temperature for one year. It starts in 1901. Until, uh, until now. The dark blue uh, years are the coldest ones and the red, dark red colors represent the, the warmest years. So what we can see is uh, that there's a trend. The beginning of the last century is mostly cold and the recent years are really warm. We can also see the climate variability of uh, in the beginning of, of the last century, we, al we also had warm years. Now we have some cold years, but we, there's a trend that we can see. So this representation is done by Ed Hawkins, which is a climatologist and data scientist. This one represents the global warming, the global temperature for uh, end. Uh, the same uh, representation has been made for all the continents, so we can see the same trend everywhere. So if we see this graph, it represents 2000 years temperature reconstructions. The colored lines are provided by paleoclimate records and the black line corresponds to instrumental measurements. So we can see that for the period where the um, black line and the col colored line overlap, there's the data are coherent. What we can see on this graph is, of course, 
the, the little ice age, which is attributed mainly to volcanic aerosol forcing. And we can see also the temperature increase, which is attributed to anthropogenic factors. What we can see in the next slide is the greenhouse gases evolution over the same period from the, the uh, we have here CO2, methane, and uh, N2O. We see that they increase a lot during the industrial era. And if we look, have a look at uh, the quaternary, here we have the data from the ice cores. In red, we have the temperature. In blue, the CO2. And in uh, green, the methane that uh, have been up, um, measured, analyzed in the ice cores in uh, Antarctica. So what we can see here over the 800,000 previous years, we, ha we can see the um, glacial interglacial periods. We can see that um, the CO2 and methane uh, graphs are coherent with the um, temperature curve. They follow the same trend. And what is interesting to see is the current value of CO2 and methane over this graph. So if, we, um, if you are interested in CO2, so the values are ranged over the, the last eight, 800,000 years between 180 ppm and 300 ppm. So if we plot the, the current value, the 2019, uh, mean value of CO2, you can see it here on the top right of the graph. So it's exceptionally high compared to what the Earth experienced as greenhouse as CO2 values. For the methane, so the, the values were ranked between 350 parts per billion and uh, 750. And the current value 2019 mean value is extremely high. So that's really concerning to have so much greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. There are several consequences, of course, the global warming, but another consequence is the ocean's acidification. So on this graph, we can see in red the CO2 um, concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, in blue, we can have the CO2 concentration in the ocean. And in light blue, we have the pH, which shows that the oceans are uh, getting more acid. As I said, more greenhouse gases imply more global warming. And uh, one of the consequences, which is already uh, noticed, is the um, global sea level rise because of uh, mainly the thermal expansion but also the melting of land-based ice. Here we have the, the measured um, sea level, global sea level, which is almost 20 centimeters from the pre-industrial uh, period. So is this an issue for our societies to have those um, changes. If we see the sea level effect, the sea level rise effect, here are the projections from uh, now until 2100. Uh, this graph is, is uh, from uh, the IPCC, the last IPCC report, the fifth one. We have uh, several scenarios. Uh, when you see 21, for the violin color and 21 for the red color, they correspond to different scenarios. In violin, it's the most optimistic uh, scenario. The red one is the business as usual, as usual one. And we can see that for the most pessimistic scenarios, uh, we can reach one meter uh, at the end of the century. So here we have 21 models who have participated in these uh, scenarios. It's uh, an intercomparison project of simulation to reproduce, to have the same framework, the same protocol, and uh, to see which, which, which are the, the different possibilities for the future.
So what could be the effect of one meter uh, of sea level rise at the end of the century? It corresponds for the islands like Maldives, Marshall or Tuvalu to uh, the total disappearance. So 100% of the population should move, should uh, leave the island in a um, definitive way because they, the oceans want uh, the levels, uh, the sea level, ocean, uh, uh, level won't uh, decrease. Uh, if we talk about um, number of persons, the sea level rise would imply for Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam, India, Egypt, to tens of millions of people um, that have to be, um, that have to move. And if we talk about um, areas, for instance, in Vietnam, it will correspond to 25,000 square kilometers of areas that would be, uh, and uh, um, that couldn't be uh, culti cult um, used for agriculture for, uh, or any use. So with 1, 000, uh, with one meter of sea level rise at the end of the century, you would have more and more climate refugees, tens of millions of person, um, and cultivable lands, and also more submersion risks. For instance, the Xintia uh, storm um, was um, more problematic because of the sea level rise. And uh, it costs a lot. So if we speak about the effects of global warming, here we have the same plot with the, the two scenarios, uh, the violin one RCP 2.6 and the red one RCP 8.5. Um, so what we can see is, yes, there's some uncertainty, but the, the biggest uncertainty is how the citizens, the government will react. Will we have uh, in the violin version more people um, acting to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions or with the red scenario, more people um, acting like today. One of the consequences of the global warming is more heat waves. So here in gray, you see the 2003 heat wave. In this diagram, we have uh, on the X uh, axis, the um, length of the heat waves. And in the Y axis, it's, uh, there's an indicator of temperature, which corresponds to the intensity. And what is expected with the RCP 8.5, the most pessimistic scenario, is that heat waves are expected to become more frequent and more intense in the future. And uh, it could correspond to three months uh, duration heat waves. And uh, just a reminder, in 2003, uh, we had 70,000 deaths in Europe because of the heat waves, because our metabolism are not adapted to such intense uh, temperatures. The impacts of the heat waves, of course, um, are concerning for health, but also for agriculture and for energy supply and for energy supply. A uh, few months ago, in 2019 summer, uh, we had two new uh, IPCC reports, one about uh, the land use, and this kind of diagrams represent for each uh, topics, what are the risks for, uh, for instance, one degree, it's the gray band, for 1.5 degree, if the Dutch, it's the dashed line, two degree, three, four, or five degrees. And the colors indicate the severity of the risk expected. So now we are at one degree above the pre-industrial era. So if we try to reduce the global warming and we and not to exceed 1.5 degree at the end of the century, we can see that for food supply, it's already uh, not um, sure that we could feed everybody. It's, uh, it will uh, need uh, some uh, changes in uh, our practices. The, another 
uh, report were, was released a few months ago about the oceans and the cryosphere indicates is, is, um, a quite high risk for the warm water corals. It's a combined effect of acidi oceans acidifications and the warming of the oceans. And to finish, last but not least, there are also issues of, about the permafrost warming because as the frozen ground is warming, we expect the release of huge amounts of greenhouse gases, which will accelerate the global warming. And thawing permafrost may also release ancient bacteria and lead to awakening of certain deadly diseases. So I, it's, I didn't speak about, spoke about all the problems, but some of them, those who are more concerning and I, would, I wanted to thank you for organizing this evening because we have a lot of challenges to tackle as scientists and also as citizens. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Nada, for this uh, clear presentation. And uh, I just wrote down in the chat that you can start writing down the, your questions. So we wait a few minutes to see if uh, some question uh, comes. Otherwise, uh, we can always have the questions in the final uh, uh, discussion. Okay. So there's a question. What is the optimal Earth temperature? Temperature. For which period? For now? For the end of the century? For the end? If it's for the end of the century, well, now, now actually the now we can't act on the temperature now. There's so much inertia. Um, we have targets for the end of the century, which will require a lot. What has been the temperature increase in France since the 90s? Uh, so we had one degree from the pre-industrial area and what is expected because what we has been released as greenhouse gases uh, is warming and uh, what is expected is that um, even if we stop totally emitting today the climate will continue warming so what has been decided during the um, COP21 is to try to limitate the global warming to 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial area because it's what will allow, uh, for instance, the island to not be totally um, under the water. Which are the parameters taken in consideration for the different temperature scenarios or the end of the centuries. So um, there are scenarios of um, that are corresponding to emissions, and uh, there is a, a correspondence between uh, emissions and the uh, future temperatures. And uh, so, if we if I go back to the slides. Do you still see my slides? Yes. So on this slide, for the RCP 2.6, it could, so here we have 32 models. They, some of them are more optimistic than others. They, they so it could be around 1.5 degree, but maybe it could go until two degrees. And for the RCP 8.5, um, it could go up to five degrees. But uh, now, currently, th there is a new intercomparison project uh, of uh, models for the future. Um, the model data will be released um, for the fifth, for the sixth, uh, I, uh, IPCC assessment report and um, the first simulations, at least the French simulations, may uh, go beyond these temperatures. 
thank you. And uh, I think we we can pass now. As we said, we we keep about five minute question after each presentation. So now we can pass to the following speaker. Uh, and uh, um, Paul Bonnet Blanc and uh, Jean Charles is going to 